Good day, people of God. It's Pastor Jeremiah, also known as Pastor Loic. We'd like to hear the word of God for the week, but before we do so, let us start with a word of prayer. So, reverence to our Heavenly Father, our God, let us bow our head and let us pray. Blessed and wonderful Father, exalted King, the only true God, Yahweh, thank you for this new opportunity that you're giving unto us to be found in your presence. We surrender there for ourselves. Body, soul, and sweet mind and heart, the atoms, fed the heaven above us, around us, and in us. We surrender everything into your mighty hands. And we pray that you forgive us for whatever we may have done that did not honor or glorify you, or our evil attitude, or evil words, or evil intent, or evil thought, or evil behavior, or evil action. Forgive us, cleanse us, purify us with the water of purification of your blood that you shed on the cross of Calvary, and that you you sanctify our heart and our mind in the name of Jesus Christ. And we stand against anything that opposes itself against the revelation of your truth, even the truth contained in your word, for your word is the truth. We bind them and cast them into the pit of hell in the name of Jesus Christ. And we proclaim that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. We pray that you take us deeper and deeper into the understanding the revelation of your mystery contained in your word in the name of Jesus Christ. We give you all the glory, all the honor forever and ever. In the name of Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen. So reading the word of God, or we take our main passage of the Holy Scripture in the book of Luke chapter 23, verse 44 to 49. So reading the word of God in the book of Luke, Chapter 23, verse 44 to 49, in the name of Jesus Christ. And it was about the sixth hour, and there was a darkness over all the earth until the ninth hour. And the sun was darkened, and the veil of the temple was rent in the mist. And when Jesus had cried with a loud voice and said, Father, into your hands I command my spirit. And having said verse, he gave up the ghost. Now when the centurion saw what was done, he glorified God, saying, Certainly this was a righteous man. And all the people that came together to that side, beholding the things which were done, smote their breast and returned. And all his acquaintance and the woman that followed him from Galilee stood afar off, Beholding these things. May the Lord bless his word, may come full of understanding, revelation, grace, life, and blessing in the name of Jesus Christ. So we continue in our main theme of our teaching about the seven sets of the last words of Jesus Christ on the cross. And today we're going to be speaking about the last set, which is the seventh set of of the last words of Jesus Christ on the cross. So we'll be closing on this teaching. In our main passage of the Holy Scriptures, we see Jesus Christ in the very last set of his last words on the cross, saying, Father, into your hands I commend my spirit. And we can notice in this statement that Jesus Christ is calling God Father. But we can recall that in the fourth set of his last words on the cross, Jesus Christ did not call God Father, even as the book of Mark described in Mark chapter 15, verse 33 to 34, which says, And when the sixth hour was come, there was darkness over the whole land until the ninth hour. And at the ninth hour, Jesus cried, Jesus cried with a loud voice, saying, Eloi, Eloi, lama sabachthani, which is being interpreted, My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? This is therefore an indication that something must have changed from the time Jesus Christ said, My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? To the moment he said, Father, into your hands, I commend my spirit. And we can also record from the teaching on the fourth set of the last words of Jesus Christ on the cross that one of the indications which was showing 
why God had left Jesus Christ was the fact that darkness had covered the whole land from the sixth hour into the ninth hour. For God is light and in him there is no darkness at all. And moreover, the word of God declares that there is no communion between light and darkness even as mentioned in the book of 1 John, 1 John chapter 1 verse 5 which says, this then is the message which we have heard of him and declare unto you that God is light and in him is no darkness at all. 2 Corinthians chapter 6 verse 14 and to say, Be ye not unequally yoked together with unbelievers. For what fellowship has righteousness with unrighteousness and what communion has light with darkness? And it is exactly at the ninth hour that Jesus Christ said, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? But when Jesus Christ was ready to give the very last set of his last words on the cross, at this point, we are now beyond the ninth hour, which implies that the light has come back upon the whole land. For darkness had covered the land only from the sixth hour into the ninth hour. Thus, now that the light has come back, indicating that God has come back, Jesus Christ can now call again God Father. All this is revealing unto us that when we are covered with darkness, meaning when we live in sin, God ceases from being our Father. He is only our God. Our or creator but he stops being God the Father unto us and this is why God said the following through the prophet Isaiah in Isaiah chapter 59 verse 1 to 2 which says behold the Lord's hand is not shortened that he cannot save nor his ear heavy that he cannot hear but your iniquity has separated you from your God and your sins have hidden his face from you so that he will not hear. Hence, when you come back to the light by repenting from your sins, God becomes again your father. And this is why the word of God says in 1 John chapter 1, verse 9, if we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Second Corinthians chapter 6 verse 14 to 18 had to say be not unequally yoked together with unbelievers for what fellowship has righteousness with unrighteousness and what communion has light with darkness and what concord has Christ with Belial what part or what part has he that believes with an infidel and what agreement has the temple of God with idols for you are the temple of the living God. As God has said, I will dwell in them and walk in them and I will be their God and they shall be my people. Wherefore, come out from among them and be ye separate, says the Lord, and touch not the unclean thing and I will receive you and, and will be a father unto you and you shall be my sons and daughters says the Lord Almighty. Hence, now that the light has come back, meaning that God has come back, Jesus Christ can again call God Father. And Jesus Christ can therefore command His Spirit to God the Father. For the Word of God says in Ecclesiastes chapter 12 verse 7, then shall the dust return to the earth as it was, and the spirit shall return unto God who gave it. In other terms, the body, when it dies, the, when a person dies, the body goes back to the dust where it was taken for, for. Remember that we were created from the dust of the ground. And the spirit returns unto God because God breathed the, 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 his spirit in our, in our nostril and we become a living soul. We can thus notice that Jesus Christ did not recommend his spirit until God had come back. Hence, 
Jesus Christ waited until the light had come back. And this is therefore telling us that if you die living in sin, your spirit will not go to God. But the kingdom of darkness will take control of your spirit. It is therefore crucial for every human being to make sure that he dies being in good communion with God. In other terms, it is important for every human being to die living in holiness to make sure that it is God who will receive your spirit and not the kingdom of darkness. And this is why when Stephen was being stoned to death, he could ask the Lord Jesus Christ to receive his spirit for he knew that he was living a life of holiness. Acts chapter 7 verse 59 which says, And they stoned Stephen, a calling upon God, and saying, Lord Jesus, receive my spirit. Furthermore, the fact that God had left the land for about three hours because darkness had covered the whole land from the sixth hour into the ninth hour and then the light came back, meaning God had returned. It is also prophesying about the return of our Lord Jesus Christ for these three hours are symbolizing three periods of time of 1,000 year, 1, years each. And the first period of time corresponds to the first millenary, meaning from the birth of Jesus Christ, which is year zero, until the year 999 of our era. And the second period corresponds to the second millenary after the birth of Jesus Christ, meaning from year 1000 to the year 1999 of our era. And the third period of time refers to the third millenary, which has started since the year 2000 of our era. And we are now in the year 2024, which means we are in, we are 25 years into the third millenary. And because the light re returned after the three hours of darkness, signifying that God had returned, these three hours are therefore prophesying unto us that Jesus Christ will also come back to fetch his church on the third period of time, which corresponds to the third millenary of our era. And since we are in the third millenary, we are therefore leaving the time of the return of our Lord Jesus Christ. Hence, every one of us should prepare himself by living a life of holiness so that he can be raptured by Jesus Christ when he will come back so that we can live with him eternally. And this is why the book of Hosea says the following in Hosea chapter 6 verse 2 which is after two days will he revive us. In the third day he will raise us up and we shall live in his sight. This implies that it is on the third millenary that God will give us life. For one day in the eyes of God is equivalent to a thousand years in our eyes, even as the book of 2 Peter declares in 2 Peter chapter 3, verse 8, which says, But beloved, be not ignorant of this one thing, that one day with the Lord is as a thousand years and a thousand years as one day. Thus, it is on the third millenary that Jesus Christ will give us eternal life by coming to rapture us so that we can go and live with him eternally. And this is also confirmed by the fact that the light came back after the ninth hour and we know that it is after ninth month of pregnancy that a woman will give birth. In other words, she will give life. And it is also after nine months that the fruit trees are producing fruit. And this is why Jesus Christ said in Matthew chapter 9, verse 37 to 38, 
Then says he unto his disciples, The harvest truly is plenteous, but the laborers are few. Pray ye therefore the Lord of the harvest, that he will send forth laborers into his harvest. Matthew chapter 24 verse 31, Jesus concludes to say, And he shall send his angels with a great sound of a trumpet, and they shall gather together his elect from the four winds, from one end of heaven to the other. And again, Jesus Christ said, Father, into your hands I commend my spirit. And we can recall that it was the same hand of God that was upon the prophet Ezekiel and that carried him in spirit to a valley full of dry bones. And as God instructed Ezekiel to prophesy on these dry bones, they became an exceeding great army, even as the book of Ezekiel describes it in Ezekiel chapter 37, verse 1 to 10, which says, The hand of the Lord was upon me and carried me out in the spirit of the Lord and set me down in the midst of the valley which was full of bones and caused me to pass by them round about. And behold, there were very many in the open valley. Oh, and lo, they were very dry. And he said unto me, Son of man, can these bones live? And I answered, O oh Lord God, you know. Again he said unto me, Prophesy upon these bones, and said unto them, O oh, ye dry bones, hear the word of the Lord. Thus says the Lord God unto these, dry, uh, unto these bones, Behold, I will cause breath to enter into you, and you shall live. And I will lay sinews upon you, and will bring up flesh upon you, and cover you with skin, and put breath in you, and you shall live, and you shall know that I am the Lord. So I prophesied, as I was commanded, and as I prophesied, there was a noise, and behold a shaking, and the bones came together, bones to his bone, bone to his bone, and when I beheld, Lo, the sinews and the flesh came up upon them, and the skin covered them above, but there was no breath in them. Then said he unto me, Prophesy unto the wind, prophesy, son of man, and say to the wind, Thus says the Lord God, Come from the four winds, O breath, and breath on upon this slain, that they may live. So I prophesied as he commanded me, and the breath came into them, and they lived and stood up upon their feet, an exceeding great army. And this is therefore revealing unto us that when your spirit is in the hands of God, the words that you will speak will give life to those who hear them. When your spirit is in the hands of God, your words will have the ability to bring things into manifestation. And this is one of the reasons Jesus Christ said in John chapter 6 verse 63, it is the spirit that quickens, in other words, that gives life. The flesh profits nothing. The words that I speak unto you, they are spirit and they are life. And Peter confirmed it by saying the following unto Jesus. In John chapter 6, verse 68. Then Simon Peter answered him, Lord, to whom shall we go? You have the words of eternal life. And this is also why the book of 1 Corinthians says the following when referring to Jesus Christ as the last Adam. In 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse 45, which says, And so it is written, the first man, Adam, was made a living soul. The last Adam, referring to Jesus Christ, was made a quickening spirit, so a spirit that gives life. These are therefore the revelations behind the seventh and last set of the last words of Jesus Christ on the cross. So we will want, we want to pray according to this revelation. So repeat after me and say, Thank you, Abba Father, Almighty Redeemer, Exalted King, Wonderful Savior, Yahweh, Thank you for teaching us about the seventh and last set of the last words of Jesus Christ on the cross. And I 
pray, Heavenly Father, so that you help me to always make sure that I walk, speak, and act in your light so that I do not be separated from you at any given time in the name of Jesus Christ. And if ever you will allow darkness to overshadow me because by mistake I would have sinned against you, I pray that you will cause me to immediately repent and forsake my sin so that I may come out of darkness into your marvelous light in the name of Jesus Christ and that you forever be my father. And again, I pray unto you, glorious father, so that you help me to separate myself, to prepare myself, to be ready for your return, Lord Jesus Christ in order for me to be part of the rapture of your church so that I may live with you eternally. And I am also praying about Father so that your hands may seize my spirit and that my words may give life to those who hear me whenever I speak in the name of Jesus Christ. And as your hands has seized my spirit right now, I thus declare that I am well spiritually, physically, and morally in the name of Jesus Christ. And as your hands are seized my spirit right now, I declare that my family and I are delivered from any power of darkness in the name of Jesus Christ. As your hands are seized my spirit, I thus declare that my family and I are free from any form of curse in the name of Jesus Christ. As your hands have seized my spirit, I therefore declare that my family and I are free from any form of death in the name of Jesus Christ. And as your hands have seized my spirit, Heavenly Father, I thus declare that my family and I are serving you in holiness all the days of our life in the name of Jesus Christ. I thank you, wonderful Father, for you have done it in the name of Jesus Christ. All the glory, honor, and power belong to you forever and ever. In the name of Jesus Christ, Amen.